if the universe is going to keep slowing down or will it come back around and crash together. We're right on the edge. After dark, the streets of Chicago teem with a different kind of nightlife. We're talking here about opening a large panorama of so-called past lives, future lives, internal life. From the boundaries of the universe to the depth of your soul. Embark on a journey through the unknown and unexplained as we explore mysteries, magic, and miracles. Hello and welcome. I'm Patrick McNee. Breaking down your barriers in life by using your past life and the most important event in the history of the universe will be featured later in the show. But first, ghostly encounters and those who track them. After dark, the streets of Chicago teem with a different kind of nightlife. If a shadowy image sends an icy chill down your spine, is it real or imagined? James Romanovich investigates unexplained phenomena of Chicago. Today we're going to take a look at a different side of Chicago, its sordid history, that which is filled with cemeteries, murders, and ghosts. People claim to see and feel ghosts. But ghost hunters are becoming much more scientific about the spirit world. And president of the Ghost Research Society, Dale Kaczmarek, shows us how. These devices will pick up that disturbance, and then we can try other equipment like our cameras and tape recorders and so forth. Basically what this does is it picks up static electricity discharges in a given location. Another DOS meter, which doesn't give an audible signal, but actually gives LED lights. Uh, we have a Geiger counter out here. One photo taken by Dale at Bachelors Grove Cemetery shows this translucent apparition of a woman sitting on a tombstone. We're here today to find out why so many people around the Chicagoland area travel to this particular cemetery in search of ghosts. If you look at the historical uh, significance of the area around here and the, the plots that they had, uh, their names are on all the plots. The Fultons, the Wheelers, they all came from the, the old country, from Germany. So I assume that many of these people that are buried in here knew one another, and perhaps they're still calling their friends even after death. There have been reports within the cemetery, uh, down this main trail, as you walk into the cemetery, of uh, what appears to be a woman, sometimes dressed in a white gown, or a wedding gown, or a bridal gown of some kind, holding a baby in her arms. So we know that through historical records, it belongs to D.W. Rogers. There was one recording which I had heard a number of years ago. Somebody had recorded uh, not too far, a few, uh, five or 10 feet away from this main gate here, uh, a sound of uh, uh, somebody calling Minna, Minna, uh, sort of wailing in the wind. And there is a gravesite in here uh, with that name, that first name of Minna. The dead don't rest too easily out here at Bachelors Grove because of all the, uh, the sacrifice and the uh, things that have went on here in the past. It acts as like a battery, charging up this area to a point that eventually it discharges in a way through manifestations, through spirits, through cold spots, feelings, sightings, uh, and balls of light that people have seen. Bachelors Grove isn't the only haunted place in the city. Next, we went to Chicago's south side to hear the tale of a murder and a ghost. This is the roadway uh, located directly in front of the Willowbrook Ballroom, where in 1931, Resurrection Mary, or a girl named Mary, was later dubbed Resurrection Mary, was hitchhiking back home along this roadway when she was struck and killed by a hit-and-run automobile somewhere between the Willowbrook Ballroom and Resurrection Cemetery. And since 1931, she has been seen still trying to hitchhike back home from the Willowbrook to the cemetery and beyond, but she never gets beyond the cemetery. We're at uh, Resurrection Cemetery in South Suburban Justice, 
7600 Archer Avenue. We're coming up to the main gates of the cemetery, where in August of 1976, a man traveling by the cemetery saw what appeared to be a girl locked in the cemetery after hours. When the police were dispatched to the area, they found these two bars at the cemetery gates pulled apart and bent at a very funny angle, and pressed in the bars with impressions of fingerprints, skin texture, and scorch marks. No one was able to give an explanation how those marks were made on the bars. Then we visited the Mount Carmel Cemetery to see the evidence of yet another haunting. We're coming up to the uh, very interesting grave here in uh, the cemetery. It's called Julia Bacola Petta. Julia died in 1921 at the age of 29 of uh, complications from childbirth. And she was buried here with her stillborn infant in this grave here at Mount Carmel Cemetery. Uh, soon after this, her mother, Philomena Bacola, began to have a series of unexplained dreams when Julia began pleading and begging with her mother to dig up and exhume the grave. And this went on for many years as the frantic mother tried to get permission from the local parish, the cemetery, and other police authorities to exhume the grave. They found Julia uh, lying as fresh as the day she was buried, uh, apparently uh, no decomposition of the body whatsoever. Uh, there are two porcelain photographs on the, uh, um, the monument now. Uh, the top one shows Julia on her wedding day holding a bouquet of roses. The bottom picture on the base of the monument shows Julia as she was found six years later after being dug up in a perfect state of preservation. There isn't a reason why Julia had no signs of decomposition after six years. To this day, a white ghostly figure is seen roaming near her grave. Now we go to a restaurant in downtown Chicago where the Ghost Research Society found unmistakable photographic evidence of ghosts. Uh, the first photograph shows absolutely nothing at all. Uh, the bottom photograph, taken a few seconds later after the film was uh, wound and recocked, shows some strange light formation to the left of the uh, the bust. What appears in this photograph, if you look to the extreme left near that table, it appears to be a, a semi-transparent figure of a monk-like individual, apparently cowled in a monk's habit. You can see the semi-transparent image above the table and directly below the table, underneath the tablecloth, you can see what appears to be semi-transparent feet and legs. This videotape was recorded by the Ghost Research Society at the stakeout of the restaurant. Listen closely. Personal accounts, recordings, and photographs. What do you think? Are the ghosts of Chicago real? or unreal. When we gaze up into the night sky, the brilliance of a billion twinkling lights fascinates us. How was the universe created? Was it created by a fiery explosion? Or was it carefully planned? People have been fascinated from time immemorial about the universe and our place in it. From a child to an adult, we have read books about space exploration, listened to space adventures on radio, and tried space travel at amusement parks. But the lure for answers to the questions of the universe go far beyond what science, physics, and even theology can tell us. At Lawrence Berkeley Laboratories in Berkeley, California, cosmologist George Smoot heads a team of researchers that discovered the origins of the universe. While he found the answer to one of life's greatest mysteries, his research also raises an even greater question. Well, cosmology is the study of the universe, how it was created, how it evolves, what its future might be. It's the study of the universe as a whole system. It's not just that we want to see how the stars and galaxies came into being. We really like to know where did the whole universe come from. In this century, our ideas of the universe have changed dramatically. The universe has gotten to be at least 10,000 times bigger than it was. In the 1920s, the astronomer Edwin Hubble proved the universe was expanding. 
While some scientists believed the expanding universe was a result of an explosion or Big Bang, others stuck with the idea that the universe was not moving, that it existed in a steady state. Hubble's discovery led Dr. Smoot to search for evidence of the Big Bang. At the beginning of the universe, there must have been these seeds that were going to turn into stars or turn into galaxies or clusters of galaxies or bigger scale things. And the idea was we needed to go and look for those, make sure we understood it and see how the universe grew and evolved as it was expanding. Cosmic seeds are actual ripples in space-time, which Smoot thinks came from the formation of the universe. The Big Bang is actually two bangs, the, the kind of expanding state that we live in now, plus this early time, which was accelerating and creating the space and time that we now live in. If we could only see how the universe evolved, we would see the formation of the stars and galaxies, all the structures in space. At first, it would be a hot, fiery explosion with matter flying apart, then a cooling down where gravity would pull matter closer together into a spiral-like galaxy. The evidence for this dramatic movement are wrinkles in the fabric of time that hold the seeds from which the universe is born. And so one of the things that, that I and other people did was to design a satellite, which we call the Cosmic Background Explorer, COBE for short, which was designed to go out and map the early universe and try and look for these seeds and also try and look for the intermediate steps, what we could see about how the galaxies were forming, what was evolving. The COBE satellite was launched by Delta Rocket in 1992. Once it was in orbit, 500 miles above the Earth, it began spinning and opened its instruments to gather information. By mapping the level of radiation in the galaxy, Kobe came up with a picture that revealed how the universe evolved from a smooth to a lumpy one made up of galaxies, clusters of galaxies, and even larger structures with holes in between. The Cosmic Background Explorer satellite was NASA's first cosmology mission, and uh, the idea was we had to get up into space to get away from the variable atmosphere and from man-made emissions and get into a place where the environment's very controlled or could scan out the whole sky. Our goal was to go and check, was that radiation really coming from the Big Bang? And that means we had to measure its spectrum, sort of split it into rainbow colors like the sun and see if the shape looked right. And so one of the first experiments on the satellite measured that and showed to better than a part in a thousand, it had exactly the shape predicted by the Big Bang. Wrinkles are a picture of the universe as an embryo. They hold the seeds that will grow into other stars, galaxies, and clusters. They are the evidence of the birth of the universe. They designed experiments to take snapshots of what the universe looked like from an embryo through adolescence into middle age, the time period that we exist in now. Looking into the night sky, we can't believe we are the only intelligent life. In fact, it's extremely likely other life forms exist in different parts of the universe. One of the things that we've done as astronomers and gone out and looked, we look at our own galaxy and we estimate there's about 100 billion stars in our galaxy. And that when you look at the picture we've made of our own galaxy, it's very clear it's a, it's a spiral disk and that we're way out at the edge. I mean, we're just not an unusual star. So we're on the third rock from the sun and we're on a star that if you were sitting in the center of the galaxy, you wouldn't be able to pick out of the crowd because it's way out in the boonies. If we use our telescopes and look carefully out at the night sky, Everywhere we see a star, in the background we see another galaxy. And we estimate that if we were to, to have the time and the effort, it, we would see over 100 billion galaxies if we just went around a telescope and looked. And so that's 100 billion stars times 100 billion galaxies, and that's just in the part of the universe we can see. The real question is what's going to happen to the universe as a whole? Is the universe going to keep slowing down, but, but not enough to, to turn around and come back, or will it slow down? Come, come back around and crash together. And what we, in our studies, what we're seeing is it's too close to tell. It looks as though we're right on the edge, we're right on the borderline between a universe that will expand forever and a universe that will turn around and collapse. Our future is secure for a long time. <laughs> and we don't know the answer, but we know the sun will run out of fuel first. Despite these advanced theories, there are still some who think the Earth is flat. The Catholic Apostolic Church in Zion, founded in 1895, believes the ancient view of the Earth to be true. 
Followers say the North Pole lies in the center of the world, with the South Pole its circular boundary. It is surrounded by a wall of ice and snow that stops ships from falling off the edge. Is it possible to experience a life that is buried deep inside our subconscious? A life you lived many years before? Susan O'Leary investigates how past lives can change us and help us to understand who we are and why we are here. I spoke to Dr. Adrian Finkelstein, who has studied past life therapy for 16 years and who has written several books on past life regression. I decided to, uh, to do research. I just uh, got volunteers, um, many of them, about 700 volunteers, and I spent thousands of hours to verify if it's correct that people lived before. Dr. Finkelstein told me that people who live with fears and paranoia in this life usually carried those fears and paranoia over from past lives. These people benefit the most from being regressed into past lives. He has a patient who constantly fears being poisoned by her husband in this life. In therapy with Dr. Finkelstein, she was put under hypnosis and taken back into a past life where her problem originated. It was discovered that her husband in her past life abused her physically and mentally. In a rage, he threw her into a well with poisonous water, and she was killed. As a result of the regression into the past life, she gained more insight into why she had such an unrealistic fear of being poisoned in this life. I asked Dr. Finkelstein if the existence of past lives has ever been proven. There was a little girl that um, I uh, regressed in my first phases of uh, my work was past life regression. This little girl was eight years old, and in this life, Jewish. In her past life, this girl was Catholic, living in Mexico in a small town called Tyla. She gave her name as Paula Laborio, and her date of birth, which was January 30th, 1862. She also gave detailed descriptions of how to make tequila and various other aspects that were typical of that era. I went to Tala, Mexico, and I found in the only church there the baptismal certificate of Paul Liborio, born January 30th, 1862. I decided to be hypnotized and taken back into a past life by Dr. Finkelstein. The level of hypnosis may vary from very deep to very superficial. Well, the first step was to get very relaxed and comfortable. Then Dr. Finkelstein basically walked me through it with his words. There were visual images. I was walking backwards and backwards. And really, without even knowing it, I was in a past life. What is your name? The name that you heard? Steen. Steen? Christine. Christine. OK. Now, Christine, I want you to um, Go backward or forward in life to a very important event in your life, Christine. And once you find that event, just tell me what's all about. First impression that comes to your mind's eye or any of your senses. I'm running. You're running. You're running where? Away. Christine, what makes you run? Because they're coming after me. Once there, I was able to see and describe details about myself and my circumstances as Christine. Usually, they come to a situation that has connection with the problem they have in their current life. I was not an outside observer. I was actually feeling the experience and the emotions of Christine. I felt both physical senses of um, being tired from walking, someone's touch, and I also felt the emotions of crying and laughing. I'm not discarding conventional treatment, but I'm merely adding a new dimension to it that uh, would broaden the scope. 
I look at things different now, or at least more closely. I pay attention to gut feelings and deja vu. And if I run into somebody that I think looks familiar or I have a camaraderie with, I think maybe I might have known him before. We're talking here about opening a large panorama of so-called past lives, future lives, internal life. It was a very difficult experience, actually. Um, it was actually painful and difficult, but in the long run, I think I learned a lot from it, and I'm glad I did it. Whatever your personal beliefs may be, Learning about other beliefs and possibilities is a way to enrich your life. I'm Patrick McNee. Join me next time for more mysteries, magic, and miracles. Through the unknown and unexplained, as we explore mysteries, magic, and miracles. Hello and welcome. I'm Patrick McNee. Breaking down your barriers in life by using your past life and the most important event in the history of the universe will be featured later in the show. But first, ghostly encounters and those who track them. After dark. Which doesn't give an audible signal, but actually gives LED lights. Uh, we have a Geiger counter out here. One photo taken by Dale at Bachelors Grove Cemetery shows this translucent apparition of a woman sitting on a tombstone. We're here today to find out why so many people around the Chicagoland area travel to this particular cemetery in search of ghosts. If you look at the historical uh, significance of the area around here and the, the plots that they had, uh, their names are on all the plots. The Fultons, the Wheelers, they all came from the... See if the universe is going to keep slowing down or will it come back around and crash together. We're right on the edge. After dark, the streets of Chicago teem with a different kind of nightlife. We're talking here about opening a large panorama of so-called past lives, future lives, internal life. From the boundaries of the universe to the depth of your soul. Embark on a journey. Murders and ghosts. People claim to see and feel ghosts. Ghost hunters are becoming much more scientific about the spirit world. And president of the Ghost Research Society, Dale Kaczmarek, shows us how. These devices will pick up that disturbance, and then we can try other equipment like our cameras and tape recorders and so forth. Basically, what this does is it picks up static electricity discharges in a given location. Another DOS meter. Uh, the streets of Chicago teem with a different kind of nightlife. If a shadowy image sends an icy chill down your spine, is it real or imagined? 
James Romanovich investigates unexplained phenomena of Chicago. Today we're going to take a look at a different side of Chicago, its sordid history, that which is filled with cemeteries,